I have a. I spoke to Gordon. I don't know if you know who I am. Oh no, sorry. But I had a um, mischief. It's not to do with this store, mm -hmm. but I can't actually go into the other store. Okay. So what happened was I had a really bad road accident in Edinburgh, uh, March last year. Okay. Where I got hit by a low lane bus. It's a big legal case. Police involved. Procurator Fisto. Um, the guy's getting uh, taken to court. I'm suing for damages. The problem that I had was is that I was new to Edinburgh. It happened on Nicholson Street. I got hit really badly in the head, where I got knocked down. People wouldn't help me. I didn't. I was completely disoriented. What happened was I literally just come from my doctor's at the time, who was Mackenzie Medical Center. Okay. I had a prescription. I, I literally, when you have a concussion, you don't really know how bad yeah, you are. Yeah, I yeah. it gets worse and worse and worse. And then I started getting dizzy, seeing double vision. I went to the boots in um, St. King James. St. St. King James. Yep, yep, St. James. Yep. And I said, I really don't feel very well. Um, is it possible for you to call an ambulance? And they said, Why don't you call an ambulance yourself? I said, Honestly, I really feel very ill. I've just been hit by a bus. Uh, I don't have enough credit on my phone. Is there any way you could please call an ambulance? And this went on for five minutes until the point that they denied me med my medication. Said, Go get there yourself. It got really, really unsavory. And um, I then staggered back to Mackenzie Medical Center. It was a complete disaster, and now I have potentially some damage. So what happened was, is the the second time I went in there before I came to this store, I literally went in and I said, "Look, this was the scenario. I'm feeling a, a tiny bit, a tiny little bit. Why did you do what you did?" And it got into a massive argument about I'm lying about my medication. Um, I'm still. I'm like, what are you talking about? So then, this other female manager came over, who I'd never seen before in my life. Said, "Yeah, I saw the scenario. Blah blah blah." I said, "But I never even spoke to you." And it got into such an argument that I started having pounding headaches again. And I said, "Look, stop." Mm -hmm. So I said, "Please contact complaints right now." So they contacted complaints, and they were almost ridiculing me. And, and there were just customers walking around. And then the, uh, the customer person said, "I think it was. It was definitely based in England." Yeah, customer, uh, customer parts in Nottingham. Right, and, we're, and Nottingham, right. So she said, look, you're obviously starting to feel quite unwell because of the headaches. Why don't you get a taxi back home and we'll pay for the taxi, compensate, blah, blah, blah. Here's my email. Um, this will not be stopped. We will go all the way to the ends to find out what happened. I sent an email and I got one reply saying it's being looked into. That was over a year ago. Mm -hmm. Then what happened is about four months after that, completely disillusioned and I was under a lot of pressure at the time, a lot. Um, I came in here and I sat in this room with Gordon and I went through the whole same scenario with him and he's like, I'll take ownership of it. And, uh, you know, I don't live in Edinburgh anymore and I don't really want to. I was treated very badly, but for boots, pharmacy, a medical, to treat me like that, like yeah. it was a concussion and all I asked for was, I wasn't specifically asking them to do it. I was like, can you medicate me or something? It was just, I'm feeling horrific. I'm vomiting. Can you please call an ambulance? And they refused to do it. Yeah. And then what happened was, is I take like a Zopacone tablet, which helps me sleep because of the pain. They started making out like I'm some kind of junkie or do you know what this tablet is? And I think you're lying about taking the medication. And I'm like, what is this? Mm. So I tried to make up and it literally just got nailed on the head to the point I gave up. I, I mean, I literally had the whole court case. I'm like, I can't run all over Edinburgh trying to figure out what Boots is doing. But now that I've stabilized, I'll be honest with you. It's one thing going into any store and doing that. But to a medical store and for them to, to not, I mean, I, I find it just, they, they caused me a huge medical problem. And with a concussion, you never really know what the damage is, right? I'm seeing a psychologist, a neurologist, all this kind of stuff. I now have constant headaches. I'm not saying that all of it's contributed to that, but when you've just been hit by a bus in the head, and all you're asking for is, can you please get someone to take me to hospital? Yeah. Truly, as a minimum, it can at least pick up a yeah, phone. Absolutely, yeah. And and the thing is, is you know, you're a new manager, Andrew. How? What do I do at this point? Even to rub salt into the wound. I got an email back saying, yeah, we'll even compensate you for the taxi and your distress. I did not get a penny. I and the thing is, they just completely disconnected. So it's one thing to not call an ambulance. Yeah. Another thing to say we're sorry. It's terrible customer service. Blah blah blah. You get a taxi. Look after yourself. And then not to even give me that. Yeah. I mean, it, 
it's pretty shocking. Did you have the, the email? Because obviously that would get I did. I, well, I, what I could do is I could just, it was a trail of uh, emails yeah. and I could forward it. But I'll be honest with you, I went through this exact same scenario with Gordon, yeah. forwarded it to him, and he assured me he would take ownership of it, and he didn't. I was given a customer complaint number, everything, and it just stopped. So I'll, I'll put it right there, my email address. Mm -hmm. If you can forward it to myself, Obviously, I'm, I'm new to the store. Mm -hmm. um, I can pick that up with customer. Because okay. it's obviously it's a, so, it's a so, central... Yeah, I mean, the one thing I would say is as well is I've got numerous emails. I'll need to make sure. I'd, I'm pretty. I'm 99% sure I still got it. What I would say is, though, is there must be a record yeah, still. Be. It'll make your life all, uh, easier, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it's one thing you go into Curry's or something and I'm not doing it. That's horrendous anyway, but Boots is a medical... Yeah, of course. No, I, I, you know, and I then to kind of turn it on me because I'm taking a sleeping pill or what the hell's wrong? I mean, it got it got nasty. I'm not gonna lie, it got really nasty. I, I'll give you my email. Yeah. If you can forward that on to me, I'd, I'd appreciate that. I will do that today. A anything at all that we got from a from a customer care point of view, um, so should anything happen in a store, mm -hmm. the emails come automatically to the store manager that's involved with it and a copy gets sent to the area manager who's involved in it. But the one thing is, is I tried to engage the manager in St. Kim's and she just literally, verbally started attacking me. To the point, uh, I said, this is not even a conversation. And to the point, customers were actually stopping what they were doing and going, what the hell is going on here? That's the only reason I came to the store in the first place, because at least he spoke to me, he didn't do anything about it. That scenario over there is at the point I can't even get in. I can't. It's not even any point me going in the store. So, with, with this, there's an audit trail that that yeah. does keep it customer care, and anything at all that we feed back yeah. is then kept on record. Right. So, for a customer complaint, the process that we have now, they will not stop sending emails on a weekly basis mm -hmm. until we send back and say the customer is satisfied yeah. and that the, there's no further no further ne action necessary for the customer's point of view. Mm -hmm. Again, if they've been dealing with you directly, and I know you said for a little bit, you kind of had to concentrate on other things. Well, I mean, for the first two, three months after it happened, sure, yeah, answer, so. first two, three months after it happened, I tried my best to get Boots to do something about it. And I just thought, the, the reason I gave up was, I think my taxi was something like £12, right? It's not a huge amount of money. But to promise that, and then just completely, just even as a talking gesture, to get, I, I thought it was like beyond the poor. And, and the thing is, is that th this court case, the real reason I'm here again, is this court case is coming to a conclusion, and people are getting sued, this conversation. Boots could get dragged into this because of what happened. Because that, when you have a concussion, you really need to get treated straight away. Yeah. And I had to dance around this whole thing for quite a while. I'm not saying that Boots would, but the way they went about it c caused me a physical problem. And... Just as an example, it, it was exacerbated for probably, I went in there for about another two, three weeks to the point, it was all, it was, uh, I think it was like three women, but then one of the, the women got verbally aggressive to the point I was getting stressed. The last thing you need with a concussion is stress. Yeah. So I'm almost at the point of feeling dizzy. That's when the person on the phone said, okay, look, this is not good. Get a taxi back to where you're staying, which I did. To then completely disengage, me coming to Gordon I, I must have sent, like, I, I sent Chaser emails like, can you please tell me what's happening? Please. Zero response. Okay. So and see if you've got those as well, because obviously mm -hmm. they'll be in your, your sent box if you can ping them to myself. Yeah. Um, just in case there's any problems with the email addresses or, yeah. you know, there's been something. I'm here for another two days. It, it's not like Gordon at all not to respond. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've known Gordon for yeah, yeah. quite a few years. Yeah. And he's very passionate about getting it right for customers. And they so get it right for me. We'll double check that we definitely got the details correct. Cause he has well, the thing is, is I, I got a response from him mm -hmm. saying it's now being looked into. And that was the last email I got. So I, I this probably went over a period of about four or five months. Okay. And then just all communication stopped. So if you can pin everything to me, yeah. everything you've got, whether you want to send them... You know, one at a time. I would just send the trail. Together, send it's the a trail. It'd be fantastic. Okay. Your name, sorry, sir. Is Barry. Is that with a line? B A R R I E. I. Yep. Fraser. F R A S E R. And your email address, sir? Um, well, the one that I think the email was sent to was BF Consultancy Limited. So Bravo Foxtrot Consultancy Limited. 
at Zoho, so that's at, so yeah, LTD, no, it's LTD. LTD, sorry? Um, at Zoho, Z O H O dot com. Okay. And do you want to leave a contact telephone number at all? I don't have a UK telephone number that's operating right now. No problem. If, if you want to send me from that email address, that's fine. If you send it from another one, I'll keep an eye out for it. Um, mm -hmm. My email address doesn't have any restrictions on it. Um, what I would say is, if I forward it to you, can yep. you just at least respond to say I'll that you've got it? it so I'm not in Edinburgh as of Saturday. Yep. What, what's your working hours? Um, I'm pretty much Monday to Friday this week. Yeah. Other than that, it's usually a Thursday I take off, so I'm, I'm, I'm in. So if I get it to you tonight, can I expect a response tomorrow? Yeah, okay. absolutely. As soon as I get it through, I'll email to say that I got it, and it's obviously there's an audit trail started between us two. Right. Um, and at that point, I can be able to chase back which of the customer care representatives have dealt with it in mm -hmm. the office and um, I think like they even say can you open this case back up because yeah. it will have its own unique reference number it did. that we can go through it did. Um, and they'll be able to see who the last person to touch it was yeah. and why you know why it stopped yeah. as I say the only the only two reasons that they will stop yes. will be they're instructed to do so by either a manager or area manager that it's been resolved to the customer satisfaction What's that? I never, yeah, or they yeah. can't get any further um, communication from like the customer for example nobody's replying telephone numbers and I have seen it before telephone numbers are incorrect and we try and try and try yeah but the one thing I would say is just because it's now a legal matter um, my number would have been the same probably for about four or five months after that it may have changed after that but my email has it's always been, been the same yeah and the thing is because it is of a legal nature now I think uh, paper trail is best rather yeah. than he said, she said, we said. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So I think I'll look for. Uh, I'll look for. I'll look out for it. Sorry, coming, Mister Fraser. I will. Um, I'll email it tonight. Fantastic. And then, um, so um, if I haven't heard from you by like twelve o'clock tomorrow morning, give then come back in. Yeah. Okay. Just give me a call to say that. Your number. Uh, I'll pop it out for you. I'm going to double check because okay. I'm so new to this story. I don't know yeah. my. <laughs> <laughs>